All right. Welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio, the show about amateur radio or ham radio with an emphasis on digital or data modes, moving information back and forth, reimagining amateur radio in the information age. Hey, let's talk a little bit about Raspberry Pis today, specifically the little displays you can put on them. Because right like this, a Raspberry Pi that's driving your radio, it's hard to tell you what it's doing. But if you put a little screen on there, you can maybe give yourself a little status. Maybe even operate data modes using nothing more than Raspberry Pi, a little screen, and a keyboard and a mouse. Let's talk about that this time on KM6 LYW Radio. Yeah. All right, welcome back. Yeah, that's the bumper music. You know, I'm, I'm gonna make you guys. These are too easy to guess now. That one's a little more obscure. Let's let's go back to the '80s for that one. Uh, <laughs> the bumper music. We're still getting away with it. Okay, these little screens that you can put on your Raspberry Pi comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes. I've got some examples here. Some of my favorites, and they come in a couple of different uh, modes too. There's kind of like two different types of screens. Um, I know traditionally you plug in your uh, you would plug in your Raspberry Pi using the HDMI adapter right here and plug it into a television set and you can get a full screen that's totally the way to go but if you want something that's a little more portable summits on the air parks on the air you might want a little screen that looks a little bit more like this this is the smallest one i could find it's pretty cool this is the next biggest guy which i really do like this is one of my favorites and the reason i like this one because he fits really well on a raspberry pi zero so you know, check that out that's a raspberry pi zero a single board computer and this is really what i recommend for uh, for amateur radio stuff but hey if you got uh, money to burn and you want to go big uh, we can do that too we've got a raspberry pi 5 here and that is a there's a screen you can get from adafruit that kind of better fits that form factor so you know this is the David and Goliath here of the two different Raspberry Pis. So if you want to go big and have the, the best Raspberry Pi there is, you can get a screen that actually fits on that. Now, just because the screen's big doesn't mean it's necessarily high resolution. You can see it's a little bit pixelated. Um, and like I mentioned before, there's two different types of screens. Um, so we have uh, HDMI monitors, that's one kind of screen. And then we also have uh, uh, DPI devices, D DisplayPort, no, nah, that's not what it's called. We call them DPI devices. And that's where it's not really a television, you can't really do video on it, and that's, that's what this is. You can draw like an image to it, uh, but the screen refresh rate is really pretty low. Um, this could be your system console if you wanted it to be, but honestly, this is probably, you're better off just drawing on this with Python and displaying images. That's what these little screens are for. Um, if you want a actual DPI display that uses all the GPIO pins, this is a good example of that one. Um, this is actually uh, a computer desktop, um, and you could actually display video on this. And this is uh, hooked up to a Raspberry Pi 4. So this is just some examples of the different displays you can put together. In fact, we got this uh, little guy operational over here. Uh, hooked up the Yaesu 2980, and these are all doing APRS duty. Um, these are all running DigiPi software. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so <laughs> that's just what these little displays look like. Honestly, you know, a lot of people get turned off to Raspberry Pis because it's just not obvious what they're doing. Um, so if you can put a little display on yours, maybe just if only to give it the status of what it's up to. Um, in this case, you know, we see APRS is showing weather information, the comments for beacons, or, you know, for people uh, sending APRS packets out on the APRS network here in California. All right, so that is the displays that we can use for Raspberry Pi. There's, what, what did we say, there's four different kinds, and we can actually um, make this a little smaller. Just to give you an idea of what they cost. They're not that expensive. Now, this this big one over here, this uh, you know, this DPI interface, um, this is actually doing a Raspberry Pi desktop, you know, uh, with full screen refresh rate, uses all the GPIO pins. That's going to be about $67 here on Adafruit. Um, actually, I didn't go out of my way to buy this one. I bought some other stuff from Adafruit, and somehow this one made it into the box. So thank you, Adafruit, for the extra display. It's actually pretty cool to get this thing to work. And honestly, to get one of these displays to work, in this case, with Raspberry Pi Bookworm, I added one line to the config.txt file, um, and suddenly this display started working. So it's just it's a lot of fun. Now, you know, I do have a magnifying glass, because if you are the average age of a ham radio operator, you're probably going to need this to read it sometimes. But, you know, it's, it's just a lot of fun to have a cool full screen uh, on your Raspberry Pi. The other screens that we talked about, the little guy and the two little guys, these are both available on Adafruit, and I'll put the links down in the in the descriptions. These are about $12 each, 
twelve dollars for a screen. And when we're talking about a Raspberry Pi, like uh, like this guy, so this Raspberry Pi Zero is probably fifteen dollars, and the screen's another twelve dollars. So you know, for with cables and stuff, for for thirty five dollars, you're in business doing data modes using a Raspberry Pi Zero, and you know, really low power. These are great for summits on the air. In fact, uh, this guy has a little battery pack. I don't know. I don't know if I can get that low enough. <laughs> it's not going to focus. Uh, th this one's a full-blown <laughs> DigiPi with a battery, a Raspberry Pi Zero, then an audio board, and then on top of that, there's the little display and a radio interface circuit that we're not going to talk about yet because uh, that's another video. Um, so those are the displays. Those are their prices. Those are different modes they have. Um, I, I honestly, you know, if you're a Python programmer, it's pretty cool just to be able to draw to this display using code. You can say, put this image here at X and Y, or write this text here. Or remember like turtle draw, you know, when you're first learning to program, you know, you can say, you know, move this line here, draw a rectangle, you know, it's that kind of, that kind of stuff. And that's really what we've done here for the DigiPi display, where it's actually just displaying uh, APRS stations. And they're touch sensitive too, like this one. Let's say I want it to be a DigiPeter. I'm just going to touch it. And voila! It's a DigiPeter, you know, <laughs> you can map touch events to do different things. In fact, this was going to transmit in three, two, there it goes, transmit. <laughs> it's a DigiPeter now, I just sent a beacon out. Um, so the touch screens work as well. And in fact, uh, that, that just mapped to a GPIO pin. So they're really, if you understand how GPIO pins work and buttons on Raspberry Pi, you know, you can kind of get the, you, you kind of know how these screens work as well. So I think they're a lot of fun. So get a screen for your Raspberry Pi one way or another, if you can, um, and, and use it however you you know, one thing I wanted to do, and this is almost based on a dare here, and again, my eyes just aren't what they used to be, is you can take one of these guys, <laughs> there's no way he's going to let you see what I see here. I don't know, he's very white. I don't know, and you can adjust, <laughs> speaking of display brightness, you can adjust the display brightness on a lot of these. I'm going to have to back off, it's just too bright. Um, so this is the DigiPi uh, web management interface, and I actually have a mouse and stuff, and if I wanted to run a WSJTX, I can do that here. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Um, so this Pi just went into WSJTX mode and switched me over to uh, 7074. Hey, we've got people online today. That's pretty cool. In fact, what I can do is make you this a little bit bigger like we had before. This is kind of cool. All right. Wow, that is really washed out, isn't it? Well, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. If I can back off, sometimes it's better. How about that? It's not, it's not as big. <laughs> but at least you can see it. So at this point, we can click on WSJTX FT8, and it'll actually display on this screen if you want it to. And so, like, there it is. We're, we are running WSJTX FT8 on one of these tiny little screens. So it is possible. In fact, I used a magnifying glass. I don't know. This would be kind of fun. Maybe we can go like this. <laughs> <laughs> that actually works. You can get an idea what this thing actually looks like uh, through the magnifying glass here. But it's literally running J WSJTX FT8. I'm on an FT8 frequency. I can enable uh, transmit. Oh, my eyes just aren't what they used to be. So I just enabled transmit on WSJTX FT8 on one of these tiny little displays. Um, so this is probably the ultimate summits on the air, parks on the air kind of device. You just got a, a full-size Raspberry Pi. In fact, that's a, what is that? That's a Pi 4 under there. And you got a little display, and you can get a little wireless keyboard and mouse if you want. And then and that's all you need. Uh, to, and just hook it up to your radio. In fact, uh, the, um, the ICOM 705 is the thing doing the... Uh, transmitting here you can see it's uh, the red lights on so we're trans i don't know if we're going to make a contact here today that would be cool though wouldn't it but i really have to back off to make that uh, show up so anyways so let me know what you guys think about using displays on raspberry pi i think they're just a lot of fun um you know doing using an hdi my monitor that you got to plug into a wall maybe you can get a 12 volt one it's just it's too complicated for me it's i think they're just kind of it's more sexy to have a a, a built-in display on a raspberry pi in fact i especially like this format we've got the cool little display sitting right on top of a raspberry pi and if you got a dual bander you know you can do something like that it's just Totally a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm not making a contact on FT8. That would be cool. I think I've done that once in these videos. I've where contact actually comes through. It's, it's sitting there transmitting. All right, guys. So I have to thank all of you for the support here. Um, let me, I can make this guy smaller. Uh, make that a lot smaller. You can watch the, the APRS stuff roll in. So, hey, none of this would be happening. We wouldn't be looking at any displays that wasn't for the patrons of the channel here. So, patreon.com slash km6lyw. Um, actually, patrons get access to the SD card image that is in all of these Raspberry Pis. It's called DigiPi. So, uh, patrons, uh, if you... Uh, 
help out here, you can go to gingerpie.org. Um, if you're a patron, you can actually download that SD card image that we're playing with here that actually drives all these displays. Um, there's custom software in the DigiPie image that's drawing these displays. It's doing that APRS stuff. And that all comes with DigiPie. And that all goes to patrons of the channel. Uh, the DigiPie implements every data mode that we talk about on this channel and even ones we don't talk about on this channel. So um, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. I'm going to have to make this a little bit bigger. Steve, Andrew, NW2, that's Mark, Afu, Brian, Chris, Malcolm, Jim, Jake. Or I can't say these fast enough. Paul, Ryan, Buddy, Robert, Kevin, Eddie, Aaron, William, Jeff, Scott, uh, W0LED, Matthew, Q1Q. <laughs> thank you guys. No, I wish I could read them off. Thank you very much. Um, I'm like 10% of the way through. Um, your support has been overwhelming for the DigiPi project. Um, so get a display, put it on your DigiPi. The DigiPi software, the SD card image will drive that display, tell you what mode the DigiPi is in, the little buttons on the screen work. In fact, if you want to put this into DigiPeter mode, I can press that button. And that DigiPi goes into APRS DigiPeter mode. It's that easy to implement these data modes on DigiPi. All right, guys, thank you. Let's see, I'm 60% through. It's unbelievable the amount of support we've been getting from you guys. Uh, Dale Datura, Motor City Man. See, if you give me a cool name to read, I'm going to read that out loud. That was cool. Motor City Man. Uh, I'm gonna, is that Detroit? I'm assuming you're from Detroit. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right, guys, put screens on your Raspberry Pi. See if you can drive them and do something cool and let me know how it goes uh, in the comments down. I'm going to put links to these displays in there as well. So, hey, my name is Craig, amateur radio call sign KM6LYW. I am in California and I am clear. <laughs>